again, I'm Matt Majeski. I'm from the Henry Ford. Um, again, it was an institution founded by Henry Ford in 1929 as an educational institution. Uh, it's a 250-acre campus focused on innovation. Uh, it includes a museum, an outdoor village, a Ford Rouge factory tour, a formerly IMAX, but now a giant screen experience. We're not affiliated with IMAX anymore. And I always forget, we were talking about it at dinner, but we have a high school, too. We have a public <laughs> charter high school. You forget. We, we yeah. Know. And so the freshmen and sophomores are study in the museum, and the junior and senior study in the village. And so it's, it's really interesting. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing environment for them to learn. And we've actually used them for focus groups, and they, they participate heavily in user testing and other things for us, which is, is extremely helpful. So. So why did we take action? So I'm going to focus more on the 50,000 foot strategy level. That's kind of where we've been. Um, and we'll get into some details, but this will we'll skate through because it's pretty obvious. So I don't know about anyone else, but this is my family, including the dog. Um, and so, so for some context, this is, these are some of the slides that I used early on when I was there to help sell the ideas of uh, the need for investment and what we needed to do. And so really the, the point of this is that Digital permeates every aspect of our life. It is not, you don't just go to a website and then do something. It, it, you go online and offline throughout your day, uh, more so now than ever as a result of mobile. And speaking of mobile, this is some Google stats, and these are probably old because they're probably three years old at this point. But, and so pro they're probably higher, but 90% of all media interactions are screen-based uh, and 10% are non-screen-based. So for us, it was a couple things. We, are, we were not mobily respon mobile responsible, mobile first at all. So that was, from a user experience standpoint, from a conversion impact standpoint, a real barrier for us. Two, it's a huge opportunity. I mean, people are spending 90% of their time on screens. It's an opportunity for us to develop content to get in front of them to drive awareness, to drive our mission. Um, so we saw it as a huge opportunity. This is, uh, again, something that's pretty obvious, but context dr d drives device choice which again, this means that people are moving online and offline throughout the day. And that means they're moving from potentially a desktop to a, to a mobile, to a tablet, depending on their activity, where they're at, what they're trying to do. Again, the need to be fully responsive with the solutions that you put out. This is uh, from Intel. Again, this is three years old, but it, it, it was, it's really eye-opening. This is what happens in one minute, um, which again, for us, is opportunity for, for, to, to get in front of people. Uh, in the places that they're at. Again, when you start to talk about uh, millennials and reaching a younger consumer as, as, as the uh, baby boomers age, this is, this is where they're at. It's amazing the, 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 the YouTube and Google searches, at least in that, are so close to each other. Right. Like, the, the, I would think that Google searches would be 100 times more than people watching YouTube videos. Right. Yep. And that's, again, that's three years old. Who knows? It could have, it could, it could have switched. But the other thing is choices and control. P you know, people's attention is more fragmented than ever. They have more choices than ever, which means we have to compete harder uh, and more strategically to, to, uh, to drive awareness, uh, consideration, and to drive visitation for, uh, for our institution. So... Our problem statement at the time was, how will we continue to grow, attract, and inspire the, uh, the mission with an ever-evolving connected consumer that has more control and options than ever? So we, we look at it as a share of time, right? So if you look in the Detroit area, how are people going to spend their time? You know, you, you, so we compete with the Detroit Tigers, we, with the Detroit Lions. How are people going to spend it with the Detroit Zoo, um, with the uh, DIA, which is the Institute of Arts? How are they going to... Uh, how are they going to spend their time? And so it's important for us to think holistically from an experience standpoint, from a digital marketing standpoint, and then from a conversion standpoint. And so this was us before. I like this little chart. But we were, we were stuck in the pre-2007 days, which was fine, right? That was where the investment happened. We did a lot of stuff between 98 and 2007. But when 2013 came and we started this team, it was not aligned with what, where the consumer was, right? And that is the connected consumer and the changes that were brought on by mobile. And so that was the need for us to, to make some changes with what we're doing and develop a strategy, a mobile first strategy. Any questions so far? So igniting a digital transformation. So 
Uh, I have to give credit to my executive leadership team. They, they uh, were visionary in this. They actually started digitizing the collection before, we, before my team was formed about seven years ago. They did it and had no idea what they were going to do with it. So um, that was great. And then they, the, they decided and made the decision to create this digital and emerging media team. I was brought on in October of 2013, almost three years ago, to drive a digital transformation. Um, so like I talked about yesterday previously, uh, digital strategy, I would say, was decentralized. So the production was done within IT. And they did run many, many absolutely successful campaigns and programs, but there wasn't control around it. So if marketing wanted to do something, they'd develop Microsoft, they'd develop it on their own, and it would go up there. And then there would be no maintenance plan for that. Um, so that was, it was problematic. So we centralized it with this team. Um, we've since grown three arms. There's a digital strategy and implementation. That's three FTEs, including me. Um, digitization, so we digitize the, the collection. We have a photo studio, and we have a, an area in the uh, library for uh, the archive scanning. And uh, an emphasis, a newfound emphasis, which I'll get into about in, on digital content. And so that's three FTEs. And the reason why I say seven indirect FTEs is because they're dotted lines. So for example, writers and content um, storytellers, they are dedicated to the digital content efforts, but they still report into historical resources and work with the curators, which made the most sense for us in, in this evolution. Uh, and then digital analytics and insights, that's part of digital marketing as well, and that's a very lean team. Um, we work most closely with marketing. We work very closely with IT and historical resources on content development. Uh, this has been a topic that we've talked about a little bit the, uh, the last couple of days, but we made the decision to outsource all development work at this time. Um, so we have an agency partner that did uh, the complete web overhaul, and that's Proficient Digital. Um, and then our e-commerce partner for retail, no, no our e-commerce partner for ticketing is uh, soon to be Accesso, and our point of, uh, our front of house system is serious wear. Matt, when they hired you, were they thinking of getting to a 14 person department this fast? No, they were thinking of a two person department. <laughs> so, like I said, that was part of this, the, sell, the, the, the sale of this. And, and really, you can see where all the, 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 the people are in the digitization and content, and you'll see why. And I see it says you, you don't work closely with finance. That must be why, right? <laughs> <laughs> we burned our bridges. No, 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 we do. <laughs> we, we work closely with everyone, but the, predominantly that's who we're working with right now. But we, you know, we do work closely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a, a much different, I think it's much different than they expected, right? It, they, I think they expected to to move on as a web team, and we're, we are t approaching as a digital transformation, as a customer experience uh, you know, approach, if that makes sense. Was SiriusWare decided already? has been there for 12, 13, 14 years, yep. And so we do e-commerce right now out of SiriusWare e-commerce, which isn't ideal. And so when Accesso purchased SiriusWare, we decided to then, and I'll get into that in very briefly, but now we're moving to that. It's a more focused, mobile, responsive e-commerce experience for ticketing and membership. But they are just purchased them, and so the integration with SiriusWare has, has been interesting. So those, those, sorry, those, those 14 people and the seven direct reports, so publicly, is it still IT? I mean, where's the, is the infrastructure? Where's all that still resides? That's still under you, or is there a separate? So yeah, so it, it, it resides in multiple places. So it's funny. We, uh, I report into Exper the, the executive vice president of experience. So that's myself, digital emerging media programs, food services and operations, and experience design. Uh, IT now reports under the CFO. And marketing reports under a vice president of business development and marketing. So there's th it's three separate teams, which creates some, some challenges. Not yeah. 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 And so we work really closely with IT, right? I mean, obviously we have a database administrator. You'll see why, and we, you know, we have the network infrastructure. I mean, they su they support the back end for us, um, but we're not even on the same larger team. Which, you know, it's fine because we have a trust amongst each other, but it, it it does in other ways create challenges. So, so this is where we were. So this is the fragmented ecosystem that we had uh, four e-commerce channels, which hasn't really changed yet. We had seven vendors across all these platforms. Less than 10% of our content was mobile optimized. Uh, and we had 25 plus sites and microsites. So it's, 
it's a disjointed user experience, inconsistent branding, no SEO whatsoever. It was a, it was a problem for us. And quite frankly, it was a bad user experience, but it was impossible for us to manage. I mean, literally, it was impossible for us to manage. There was one person trying to manage this, and they focused 90% of their time on one property, and there was 24 others to be managed. So... So our inspiration was, I mean, I, we don't have to spend a ton of time because you guys all know this, but distribution, I mean, you look at, you know, the disruption that's happened in the last 10 or less years, it's unbelievable um, between, you know, finding new ways of selling the same goods, so Amazon putting bookstores out of business to Uber changing a complete industry that existed for 50, 60, 70 years uh, just by, with an app. Um, to, I think, GoPro, which is really interesting. Red Bull's been well, well known for, uh, for owning the content marketing space. But I just uh, listened to a, a speech by the, uh, the chief content officer of GoPro, and they say, we're not a device company, we're a content company. We just provide people the device to create content. And I think that's an interesting perspective to take, because that's, that's where everything's moving. And so this, this, all of this kind of helped us come up with our long-term plan. In addition, I talked about this yesterday, and I love that picture in the middle because it's so true, but traffic is driven by content now, right? Search engine optimization, obviously we can't spend a ton of money on paying digital media or paid media, um, and we need to make the engine work for us. Five minutes, oh boy, I gotta go quick. Uh, and then conversion, I mean, it's a science now, and I don't think before, you know, I, we didn't look at user experience as a science, and it really is. It's something you have to look at. You have to stay up to date. You have to look at metrics. You have to continue to optimize. Again, it's an ongoing task, and that is, I love that picture. And then if you do these things, it, 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 it does drive revenue, which allows you to reinvest in. It's, a, it's a really a sustainability thing. So what were our drivers? It was to increase national awareness of Henry Ford and its offerings. It's to optimize conversion paths. It's to identify new areas for monetization. It's huge. We have to optimize revenue streams, which are ticketing and membership, but also how do we find new revenue streams for, our, for, for sustainability purposes. Um, position THF is uh, uh, an innovation um, educator and create avid fans. So the blueprint. So we've been talking a lot about e-commerce and, and e-commerce is very critical for us and so that's in the middle but it really was surrounded by a ton of other things that had to happen and really we felt had to happen first um, to enable all the things that we want to enable apps and education and content publishing experience on site experiences online um, websites and that was to develop the digital content engine roadmap which I'll get into again that's part technology but it's really people and process um, it's to develop a digital collections platform. It's a digital product for us. Um, and then to relaunch and re-architect and redesign our entire digital footprint and our websites. Um, and then you'll see the other things that we know we need to do to offer personalization across online and offline uh, touch points with our customers, which is a CRM um, and other educational content. And then how do we blend physical uh, and digital together? Because again, these content efforts that you're going to see are, is us trying to add context to our collection. So our collection's unique in that you could see this lathe sitting on the museum floor and you just say, oh, that's a lathe. Without our ability to tell the story that this is actually the lathe that helped start the Industrial Revolution, it's, it's, you, you can't make that connection. So we, it's critically important for us to be proactive storytellers, to pull the richness out of our collection and tell the stories, and so that's what we're trying to do. And that helps to enhance the physical experience as well. So our blueprint, this was what I've been using for three years now. I, did, had, I had no idea that it would stick as well as it did, but it, it, it's a one-pager that helped the board and the executive team and, and, and others understand what we're trying to do. So it moves from the bottom up, as you see from the arrows, but the, the the foundation of what we're doing is, is, uh, is content, and that starts with digitizing our collection. We have 26 million objects and archival items in our collection. Only 5% is made available to the public. This provides a huge opportunity for us to, again, enhance the experience online, but then to open up this collection to the world. One of our goals is national global awareness. This is how we can, we can start to do that. And we were doing that, and that was very good foresight by our executive team. But we needed to take it a step further by adding that context that I was talking about. And so that's when we set forth with the content, digital content engine team to focus on storytelling. And that could be storytelling for marketing purposes, so creating content for social channels, but that also could be 
creating educational content, educational curriculum that you sell, uh, entertainment products. We now, um, in 2013, started a national TV show, TV show that airs in the Saturday mornings on CBS called T uh, the Henry Ford's Innovation Nation. That's another content opportunity and then distribution model, which is up top. And so all these things are starting to work together for us. So then you move to the top and that's, then what do you, you have all this content, what do you do with it? You distribute it on your own channel. So your, your website, your blogs, your social channels, uh, you use paid media, you get into partnerships with content, uh, content distributors, you leverage the content to push it out on site in the venues that you have. Um, and that is where we're focused uh, right now. And we'll go through some of these real quick. So content. We redesigned and built, and we built ourselves, so this is a buy versus make, we built our digital collections platform um, from scratch. We used what was already existed as much as we could. Um, basically, we integrate with our e, the EMU collections management system. We harvest data out into a SQL database, and then we built APIs to push the collection to kiosks that are on the floor and to the collections platform. Our challenge before was that it was a manual process. So when we, if we want to be a proactive content publisher, which is what we're trying to do, and a story breaks in the news and we have something that's aligned with our collection and we need to digitize it and we want to push the story out, we wouldn't be able to do that. Now we've automated the process, it, it runs nightly. So anything we digitize the, the day before, as long as we get the metadata into the system and everything, will be pushed automatically at night to the digital collections platform and to the kiosk or anywhere the APIs are used. So who fits in to the Henry Ford because it is American innovation? I noticed that that was there. I couldn't and believe it. I'm like, is that the one? 26 million things and that's what they, yeah. I noticed that last night. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm going to get a question on that. Yeah. We, uh, we're opening a glass gallery on next week. <laughs> yeah, that's why my team. That's why my team. The team was here a couple. Of, uh, well, I don't know, six months ago. Right. Oh, that's Yeah. Unbelievable. So, I mean, it really starts at this collection search aspect, and it really is a robust platform. Uh, you can search. There's advanced search. Uh, you can authenticate in. So basically, it's for teachers and students. You can have your students authenticate in. They can create their own user sets based on what you tell them to search for, and you can filter. It's, pretty, it's a pretty dynamic platform. They can then put it into presentation view to present in the classroom. They can add their narratives and put it up and present it. Um, you can also, like uh, Ron was talking about, you can purchase high-res images directly from this for uh, direct digital download. We have done this before, but one, no one knew that we did it. No one could find the images, and uh, it was physically fulfilled. This is full digital fulfillment. Um, I'll get into that in a second. And then we've also built something we call artifact cards. So artifact cards, we are a mobile manifestation of an artifact detail page. So if you went and you looked up this Dale Chihuly on the digital collections, you get a web page. You can also choose to take an artifact card and put it on your blog, put it on your social channel. And it's a, it's a snippet of code with a fixed dimension that's like a card that is dynamic. So you can filter through all the images. You can flip it and all the metadata is on there. You can go to the, at the Henry Ford section and it tells you who we are because we hope that this gets into the hands of people that don't know who, us, who we are and then you can share it. And that lives out wherever anyone pushes it. So if someone writes a blog uh, about this uh, Dale Chihuly, they can pull this artifact card and this is fully dynamic on their page. They can filter through all the images. If we make updates to the metadata, It'll go wherever it's out, and it updates that. So it's a portable piece of, 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 of code that helps us. It's an earned media opportunity for us, right? Now, I call this enabling technology because we have not scratched the surface on how we can appropriately use it. The other thing we did is uh, we're working on potential physical cards that drive people online. So again, it's the physical to digital connection. So selling these in the gift shop, a series of artifact cards, there's potential gamification opportunities with this. So again, we're scratching the surface with this, but again, it's an opportunity, and that's what we looked at as we develop. It's an opportunity for earned media opportunities. Free media is exactly what we need. Any questions on that? I know I have no time. Correct. Okay, let's go quick. <laughs> Content engine requires people, so I'll just go real quick. We have physical collections. We need people identifying artifacts. We need then to digitize the collection. 
we then need to create artifact content. The nice thing about it is we've automated the artifact card process. So anytime that something gets put in and pulled out of the SQL database, our uh, agency and us developed a way to autom automate the creation of artifact cards down to uh, auto cropping software so we don't touch it. Now, it's about 99% Right, there are sometimes we have to go manually manipulate an, ma manipulate an image, but that's totally automated. We don't do anything, it creates it, which provides social sharing opportunities. We then need people writing stories and creating educational products on top of that. So that, again, is more people that we need. And then we need to distribute the products, and that's done off offline through potential retail card packs, uh, integration with our magazine that uh, we have. Uh, and then opportunities with educational uh, content and earned stories. And then we push it out on our own properties, which are our apps, which we don't have any yet, <laughs> uh, thf.org, our blog, and any, any um, in-museum kiosk opportunities. So this is the manifestation of that. This is our explore section of our website. This is a proactive content section of our site. This is where a lot of our efforts go. Um, it, we're just getting it up, off the ground and running. Um, I want to show, can I show an example of the video? I think it's, it's a good example. Um, but this, this is the, why? I think it's the user. This is the differentiator, because anyone can just build a website that tries to sell you know, a museum for them to come. Our, the differentiator for us is the, uh, is the content. And so just to get, I'll give you one, a couple examples and then I'll go quick, very quick. So we have three main story types. Well, there's more than three, but there's three main that we're focused on. We also have Inside the Henry Ford Stories. This is the TV show that's hosted by Mo Rocca that we host all the different episodes on. Um, and then we have enthusiast channels and a blog. Um, So we have what if stories. What if stories are 600 to 1800 word essays. It integrates artifact cards with, with very vivid storytelling. And so in this example, and it's a kind of a provocative title to pull people in. These play well on social media. So what if everyone could have a personal computer? This is the story of the Apple One. Here's an example of an artifact card. Flip it. There's all the metadata. And then we integrate these into the stories. As you go down, it tells the story of the Apple One. There's some interactivity. There's uh, a picture of Wozniak. Here's an example with. There we go. This is an example with mul with multiple multimedia records. How you you filter through that could live again anywhere on anyone's site. Um, and then here, flips up artifacts related to the story, and you can filter through all the different artifacts related to the story. What we're trying to do is create a circular motion. We want to pull people in and get people lost in our collection. And then they can buy images, and we cross-promote uh, events, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Cross-sell, upsell, but one, it's driving traffic to our site. So that's one story type, and we have multiple types that we're working on and we'll continue to work on. You'll see some of the examples. What if Henry Ford never finished building his first automobile? I like this one. What if a potato could change the world of agriculture? These are a what if I don't move to the back of the bus. That's the story of Rosa Parks I'll talk about in a second. I know I'm running really so Connect3, we knew we needed a video, and so we created a video series. These are completely templated and repeatable for us. The scripts are the hard part, uh, and then we've made it you know, pretty simple to, to create, and these we push out on social media. For millions of artifacts in the Henry Ford's digital collections, our experts choose three and reveal the surprisingly curious connections between them. Here's the leading limb
and Steve was the answer so too. He owns an HP 35, and he wanted to have the same spec happen in the personal computer he was developing called the Apple One. One of the Apple Ones from this first batch of 50 ever made is now here in the collections of the Henry Ford. This computer marks a really important turn in the home computing revolution. And so much like the Descartes Zoom and the HP 35 calculator, the Apple One is truly the beginning of something. Yet it owes so much. Oh. Anyway, it ends and then the artifact cards show up, but they're annotated and you can click through and it takes you to the site. So if it's anywhere on, on uh, YouTube, you can click right through to the artifact te that artifact detail page. And so it's dif differing levels of depth. So that is high level. You can then go to a what if, which adds a little more detail and, and depth. And then you can get into the collection items, which potentially uh, provides more depth. And then we have other related content from the TV show. Uh, from blogs that all we all try to, to, to align and, and get people lost into. So Is it traffic that up to your expectations? Yep, I'll get to that. Yep. And so here's an example. Well, let me put it in presentation mode. Here's an example of what we're trying to do. So, and this has worked. And it hasn't worked all, for all of them, but for this one specifically. So for what if I don't move to the back of the bus? So this is Rosa Parks. Not everyone thought of us as a place where we talk about social transformation or even have the Rosa Parks bus. We do actually have the Rosa Parks bus that she sat on. Um, and the beauty of what, what happened here, and this is what we were hoping to happen, and we want to create scale on this, is that we created this story. And now when you Google search Rosa Parks, we show up, and it fluctuates daily, but we show up here in the top four of Google for Rosa Parks. For Rosa Parks bus, we show up number one, sometimes above Google search tools you know, these, these types of tools. And what that has done for us is it's driven a whole new audience to us that we would have never interacted with before. Uh, between launch and July 31st, that was over 42,000 people visited this and spent uh, 265,000 minutes on this, I think, on this one. I'm getting my numbers, but I know it's about 42,000 people. And so if we can recreate this and scale this, that's an amazing opportunity for us, and that's the power of the content we're trying to create. Any questions on that? Okay. So distribution. <laughs> New website. Great. Uh, but it shows we partnered with, with, uh, with our friends in marketing to create a mobile first email. It was not before. That has increased uh, referrals back to the website by 33%. We partner right now and we're testing with Google Arts and Culture. They have street viewed our entire campus, including inside the, the, the buildings. That was one of the main value propositions. Uh, and we're testing to see what is the, what's that doing for us. Uh, it's allowed us to test other things like virtual learning in their Google Expeditions app, which was, which was a really good opportunity. And right now we're testing Google Podium, which allows you to push content. It's a one-way social network basically in Google search results. So if you search for Henry Ford, we can push content out to you. And we've done that for e-commerce purposes. We were trying to sell Halloween tickets for a Halloween event, and we've pushed video content out through that, and that's, it's actually been successful. That's a six-month test for us. So our e-commerce engine. So collections e-commerce. This is, again, the platform was built by Proficient. Uh, we leverage e integration with Emo and uh, Microsoft SQL Database. The payment is 100% powered by Stripe. Um, this is a great example. Our board always asks, well, who's your audience for this? And the, the, the traditional answer is researchers, scholars, teachers, enthusiasts. Well, recently we had a tattoo artist buy $500 worth of tattoo, historic tattoo sketches. Who would have ever thought that a tattoo artist would buy anything from us? And so that's the opportunity. This, and we, we re reversed his path. He came in through search. So the entire collections was not before search engine optimized. It is now, and it's driving a whole new audience to uh, interact with and hopefully purchase our goods and services. Uh, we are in the process of hopefully launching in a couple weeks uh, a brand new ticketing e-commerce system through Accesso. Uh, that is now Accesso Seriousware. We've talked a little bit about that. And we have our online shop, which is ran by Event Network. They're using a Magento platform. We hope to be uh, upgrading to a fully responsive Magento platform next year. So results. Our online visits are up 12% since we launched. So again, this is year over year, March 1st to July 31st. Uh, they're up 12%. Our conversion, which we're most proud of, is up 16%. Um, traffic from organic search is up nine. Social media referrals is up 107 percent. So people are using the using the content, they're sharing the content, and they're coming back to the site because of the content. 
Uh, email referrals are up, I talked about. Digital collections usage is up 155%. Uh, again, this was unifying. Our collections platform was a separate site before. We now have one site search that runs collections and the site. So if you search for the quadricycle, you get any web content, you get any collections content, you get any educational content. That's run by Elasticsearch. Um, our content engagement, people have spent 877,000 minutes on the, on the content. And we, like I talked about yesterday, we've attributed a $1.8 million media value to that. And most importantly, our online revenue is up 24%. I will say our online revenue from 2013 to projected to 2017 is, is estimated to go up 286%. So it's working. So lesson learned, becoming a content publisher is hard and takes dedicated resources, which is sometimes hard to sell or is always hard to sell. Uh, digital storage becomes extremely critical as you digitize and continue to digitize and create content and video content. Um, prioritization and appropriate project management is key. Change management, both operational and culturally, is ongoing. Clear roles and responsibilities are absolutely needed. This is a big one. Fit and finish versus minimum viable product is important. So it's the ongoing balance of quality versus speed. So can you take some images with uh, your cell phone versus having a big production? And that is a constant discussion that I have uh, with our team. Uh, you may not get everything right the first time, that's, that's obvious. Um, we've talked a lot about this, multiple platforms create challenging user experience, but you have to focus on ROI. I need your like, final thoughts. Yep, page, blah, 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 blah. top five takeaways, how's that? I'm done. Pick one. E-commerce, I'll, I'll read them quick. E-commerce user experience is critical, but it's not the only part of the success equation. This is a big one when we talk about having a success, su success with image commerce or collections image commerce. Online revenue growth requires acquisition strategies which require digital media investment. We started doing an AdWord campaign that doubled the uh, amount of images we sold in a two week period when it was up for six months. So I mean, it, it, it's absolutely critical to focus on that. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, customer centric approach, a lot of what uh, Allegra you talked about, it's absolutely critical. People move online and offline throughout their journey. It's important to drive utility. Uh, and dig digital infrastructure needs are large foundational and require ongoing investment. And I'm finally done. <laughs>